Welcome to the Shreveport Connection with Tommy. This video is on your SmackDown Live 205. Uh, also, main event spoilers video. Uh, happy birthday goes to Carl Anderson, turned 37 years old, while Batista turned 48. Million Dollar Man turned 63. And uh, extra, it was reporting that former WWE star Aaron Andrew, formerly known as Cameron, We'll be co-hosting a new TV show with La Leticia Castro called Two on Where? Uh, the, uh, and you can see the uh, official trailer or whatever on the uh, video on the website. And uh, spoilers for your uh, WWE main event. Here's uh, Alicia Fox uh, defeated Dana Brooke. And Epico defeated Darren Young when Young suffered an arm injury. Uh, unknown anything from that? On that? Well, recently on the Jim Ross Report, good old JR. JR spoke about, with the former WWE superstar Alex Riley. I think it was a two part, but I think I did some of this last week. Also known as Kevin Kelly Jr., among other things. Riley talked about high profile departures of Cody Rhodes and CM Punk. Also, Riley said that he would like to work with Dolph Ziggler. On Rhodes' uh, WWE departure, Riley said it took a lot of courage to walk away from WWE because not many people would have made, made that difficult choice. First of all, I think he's a tremendous person. I only say that because it's the truth. I never say, say that if I didn't believe it. He loved what he did. And when I see that and when I keep on his story, and Ross brings it up to me. He's a guy that he just wanted to perform the way he wanted to as a wrestler, as a creative artist, whatever you want to call it. Singer, actor. It's really all the same. You have to have love for what you're doing. A true love. Not okay. Well, I'm going to show up here and they're going to pay me, pay me this. I'm going to say that. And because I'm here 12 hours a day, it means I love it. It doesn't mean you really you really love it. What Cody did means he really loves it. He was tired. It was a matter of where he was on the card or exposure he had or what community he may not get. He believed in something. It wasn't what they thought he was and made a choice to go out on his own. And honestly, I don't think you can get any more courageous than that. And people say that, oh, He's so for fortunate, and he is. He's a very fortunate man, and he certainly works for it. And have to be given the opportunity that he did to be allowed the opportunity to make the money that he has made. However, to leave the uh, leave the money that he has made to go out on his own, a lot of people would not have made that choice. As for CM Punk, Riley indicated that he does not have much sympathy for the longest reigning WWE champion in the modern era. According to Riley, Punk should have expected the toll being. WWE champion takes on a person and a Rye did not seem to agree with the way in which Punk walked away from the world's biggest professional wrestling promotion. I was in the locker rooms with, with him a lot actually on, on his rise to stardom. Yeah, me, me and Sam Punk were never buddies per se. Uh, I certainly uh, spent a lot of time with him on the road with him. He was WWE champion for most of it. For a lot of it, or certainly one of the top players there. If you don't know that, when you when you put yourself in the circle of people that are going to be considered for the WWE Championship, then you are going to get your brains beat out, both physically, emotionally. Then you're nuts. I don't I don't understand. I didn't uh, really keep up on much of the details on how things went down, but there are maybe some complaints there are about. Maybe a medical thing or something, but that's the gig, man. I mean, that's what you uh, what you sign up for. I don't know what he ended up making, or if it was even disclosed. But it was a lot. Now, if somebody's going to pay me, what three over a million dollars? It doesn't matter if you're making that kind kind of money. If you're breathing, you're working. I was begging for, uh, for somebody to give me an opportunity to work. Begging, asking people every day, why am I not being used? Why can't I do this? How about I do this? 
and never really getting an answer. We're waiting for we we're, we're waiting for this, and we're waiting for that. Or it's going to be okay. So to hear him kind of just push for that opportunity, get it, and then exit in the fashion he exited. I don't know. I can't sympathize with that because I don't know if I would do that. That being said, I don't know the exact details of what he went through. So who knows? Alex first uh, post WWE release comments. WWE announces filming la uh, later for some type of uh, WWE network. Okay. He uh, comments when asked uh, who he would like to face if he had another run in WWE. And, of course, names like Dolph Ziggler immediately. The, the varsity villain stated that Ziggler is a great guy and a great worker. Dolph Ziggler, yeah, I think he's a great guy. I think he's extremely talented. I think he's tough as nails. Dolph, he re really has lasted there. I've uh, always said this, too. I think that people can hang on in WWE if you can become a, champ a champion of WWE of any kind. If you can last on the roster for, shoot, even a year. They're talking about Dolph being there at this point, 10, 12 years. You're one of the toughest people on the planet. I'm not saying that for any reason than, than, than the truth. It challenges you in every way that you can be challenged. And Riley added, for Dolph to have that, that type of success that he has done there, I can't say enough about him, and I'd love to do a run with him. It would be pretty cool. Also, Riley said that Ziggler has an incredible passion for the professional wrestling business. What he, do, what he does better than anybody. And I think you have to have this about you. If you're going to be there, you have to ha have the real passion for what he does. And that is, he'll be he'll sacrifice anything for that company. He'll be on the road by himself. I don't know if he has a girlfriend right now, or if he's married, or what his deal is. But he has. If, he, uh, if he's with the WWE, he has no other interest. He wants to be the best superstar WWE that he possibly can be every single day of his life. And I'm very, very good friends with him, or at least uh, was when I was there. And walked into the, every building every Monday and Tuesday, expected to be the WWE champion, and believing he could be. And when they tell him, "No, you're not, you're not today going to be the WWE champion," he has enough in him to just to shake it and reload again for the next day. And it does, uh, it doesn't bother him. He fights through it, and he cares about it more, more than most. Several WWE superstars took to Twitter to react to the news of WWE Hall of Famer Jerry King Lawler calling the 30 man battle Ro Royal Rumble main event in less than two weeks with Corey Graves and Michael Cole l later this month. Of course, SmackDown announcer Mario Rado tweeted following on, on the news, welcoming Law uh, Jerry King Lawler back. Mar at Mario Rado, really happy to, that my former broadcast partner will call hashtag the Royal Rumble match. Welcome back, King. Also noted, the Hardy Boys re released a video hyping their expedition of gold where they plan to challenge cha champions of other pro from other promotions. They went on to challenge Al American Alpha, Sheamus and Cesaro, and the Young Bucks. In the video here, in the link, Young Bucks responded to the Hardys and accepted the challenge while taking a shot at 205 Live as well. Of course, there's a Twitter link. <clears throat> and comment uh, on they commented on. I really, really hope to uh, to God Ring of Honor's uh, cool with it because we'll wrestle you at the Impact Zone. We'll wrestle you on your compound. We'll do it here, Matt said. And if they're not cool with it, we'll quit. We'll go to NXT. We'll go to the CWC. We'll go to 205 Live. Okay, maybe not 205 Live. Also noted that Hardy's appeared in, in a video package at last December's Ring of Honor Final Battle pay-per-view to hype that, that same uh, event of the Young Bucks at the Ring of Honor Live event on April 1st in Lakeland, Florida, the, the night before WrestleMania 33 in Orlando. So will they actually make it to WrestleMania? Who knows? Anything can happen. I should be paying from WWE. The Hardy's uh, TNA's contract expired in February, and Dave Meltzer recently reported that from the Wrestling Observer newsletter that WWE is interested in bringing the Hardy's back to the company. 
Don Cyrus Collis, who was known as the Jackal in WWE in the 90s, will be replacing Steve Carino on NJPW's English commentary team. He will be joining Ring of Honor commentary Kevin Kelly for events on the New Japan World streaming service. Callis commented on the new job, writing on Twitter. Cyrus Overhuge on Twitter. Looking forward to working with my old friend at Real Kevin Kelly on at NJP World shows. Feels great to work for the hottest promotion in the world. Former WWE Women's Champion Beth Phoenix is expected to be inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. Spoiler alert for WrestleMania 33 in Orlando, according to PW Insider. Beth is a one-time WWE Divas Champion and a three-time Women's Champion. She also won the Slammy Award for Diva of the Year in 2008. She retired in the fall of 2012 and married WWE Hall of Famer Edge in 2016. And now they have two daughters. Lyric Rose Copeland, born in December 2013. Ruby Ever Copeland, born in May, in, in May of 2016. WWE has already announced Kurt Angle as this year's Hall of Fame headliner. But no other names have been confirmed yet. Rumor, uh, other names are Diamond Dallas Page, William Regal, Ravishing Rick Rude, Christian, IRS, The Natural Disasters, both John Tinta, Earthquake, and Fred Oppen, Typhoon. If you don't know. Oh! Tugboat. Uh, WB posted a video of former NFL linebacker at this link. Kasim Adabali of the of, of the New Orleans, New Orleans Saints channeling, channeling, channeling the Rock at a recent WWE performance at a trial. As speculated, WWE NXT talent Deanna Peraza was the woman who played La Luchadora on last week's uh, WWE SmackDown and distracted Becky Lynch during her SmackDown's women's title match with Alexa Bliss. Peraza was backstage again for for a SmackDown, but uh, was not used. Uh, according to PW Insider, she was backstage and has not has not signed a WWE deal yet, yet. But if you see if you seen uh, SmackDown, Mickey James made her return, as I pre predicted. But it was a, a week late. I was predicting her debut at the live event here in uh, Bowser City area. But uh, the other former women's champion, Mickey James, revealed to be La Luchadora on SmackDown. From Tuesday night, helping SmackDown's women champion Alexa Bliss retain over Becky Lynch in a steel cage main event. In a follow-up video of this link, Mickey and Alexa were approached for, for comment, but Bliss just brags about retaining the title. NEA report out of Northeast Arkansas has a story about an altercation with Randy Orton with a fan at a gym before a SmackDown live event in Jonesboro. His local business professional. Anthony Martin, who grew up as a wrestling fan, noted that he was with his friends at the, at the trim gym when they spotted Orton. Martin asked Orton for a picture. However, Orton responded with a, with a fist bump and pointed to his earphones and said that he, he couldn't hear, hear, hear Martin. I'll post a picture of that for you, as I did get that from the, the thing. And also, you can, uh, I'll post the link uh, very shortly as well. Martin left, left Orton alone and proceeded to take a photo of him from across the room, which, call, which caused Orton to lose, lose his cool. He saw me snap the picture, and he came up to, to me and got my face and said, What the F are you doing? I said, No dang pictures. Are you effing stupid? Martin said, I said, No. You said you couldn't hear me. So Randy came over to Anthony, grabbed his hand, and was belittling Anthony and pretty much was saying, MF for this, MF for that. Added uh, Martin's friend, Cody Halstead, who was also with him at the gym. The uh, tirade uh, continued before Orton eventually calmed down and told the men to enjoy the workout before leaving. And you can read the full, uh, you can read the full thing. Uh, reported this uh, link for you. Some funny news. Here that Orton he was Eating a cookie during a wrestling match. And this was uh, dated back in December. I think it was a Christmas cookie. As seen uh, during the Mickle Miracle of 34th Street fight, Randy Orton decided to take a break from beating up David Otunga to enjoy a Christmas cookie. Orton proceeded to put a, put a wreath around Otunga's neck and said, 
ho, 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 and throw them into a tree. Uh, the WWE announced that to, to, to Jerry suffered a right knee injury at the January 5th NXT tapings from Full Sail University to Jerry team with NXT cha champion Shinsuke Nakamura at the show, which will, air, which air, will air on uh, January 25th. Well, that's a spoiler for that particular event. There's no timetable given for his return, although it's noted that it is, he is cur currently not medically cleared to compete. In addition to January 5th NXT episode uh, tapings, Jerry made, his, uh, made a 205 live debut on January 3rd, defeating Sean Maluda. He teased an angle with Brian Kendrick after the match when he spit Green Myth into Kendrick's eyes. Nothing more than that. WWE Studios film animated serves up to be found this trailer. It is being released to, uh, on Tuesday. Where the voice work from John Cena, Triple H, Undertaker, Page, Vince McMahon, and Michael Cole. Dark match before SmackDown in Memphis. Saw Mojo Raleigh defeat Tyler Breeze. Mojo was not wearing his Hype Brothers gear. Due to the fact that uh, he's going on singles because Zack Ryder is out of action for at least four, four to six months. SmackDown opened up with a promo from Becky Lynch. Versus a uh, SmackDown Women's Champion, Alexa Bliss, first deal cage, which would go, is going to be the main event. Live from Memphis with Rock Mauro Ronaldo as we see the steel cage hanging above the ring. Mauro is joined in by David Otunga, JBL, and Tom Phillips. We go right to the ring. Out comes SmackDown Commissioner Shane McMahon. And this actually can be seen in this link. Shane greeted Memphis and they uh, chanted his name. He hopped the 30-man uh, Royal Rumble main event. And some of the participants, including Bill Goldberg, Brock Lesnar, Undertaker, Braun Strowman. Dolph Ziggler, Miz, and others. Shane announced that the WWE title will be defended inside the Elimination Chamber in Phoenix, Arizona at the WWE uh, at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Winner will go on to defend at WrestleMania 33. WWE Champion AJ Styles comes out when he's not happy with Shane's announcement. He's never been in a Chamber match and now the title will be on the line. Shane points out how AJ Still has to defend as, as a Royal Rumble against John Cena before the Chamber. AJ threatens to take the title and go to Japan for good. The music hits and out comes John Cena to mix reaction. Cena goes to speak, but AJ shuts him up and mocks him for his brother-in-law giving him a title shot. AJ tells Cena to stand there and shut up. AJ wonders who's coming to steal his spotlight next. The music hits and out comes The Miz with Maurice. Miz rants on and going on going to the main event of WrestleMania and walking out with the WWE title and the Intercontinental title. AJ says Miz hides behind his wife. AJ wants Miz to stay away from the title and the chamber match. Miz says while AJ was in Japan drawing his hair to look like the world's next top soccer mom, he was uh, beating up John Cena and WrestleMania before beating up John, John Cena was cool. Miz goes on about what he's done in WWE. Miz says it sounds like Miz thinks he's better than AJ. AJ says last time they were in Memphis, he knocked Miz's teeth out. AJ cracks a joke at Maurice and uh, Cena eggs Miz on. They have words, but Shane gets in between them. Shane makes AJ versus Miz right now. Shane, Shane's music hits. It's going to commercial after we plug for King, King's Court. Back from the break, Shane runs into Intercontinental Champion Dean Ambrose backstage. Amber says he should be in the elimination chamber, and Shane says they will talk about the, uh, They will talk about it. Amber says he needs a new title belt because this one smells and is sticky because of the Miz. Amber brings up the Wyatt family and says he wants Randy Orton tonight just for fun. Shane makes a makes a match. Miz versus AJ Styles can be found in this link. We go to ring out uh, for this non-title match. Seeing his own commentary, they lock up uh, fan champ for AJ. Back and forth to start the match as they trade shots or trade holds. Uh, they run the ropes. So AJ nails the drop kick. AJ poses to taunt Cena. AJ makes takes Miz to the corner. AJ with a backbreaker for two count. AJ ends up going for the calf crusher, but Miz makes it to the ro uh, to the ropes. AJ keeps control and goes for another pin attempt. Miz runs in, in, into boots in the, uh, in the corner. AJ goes for the springboard in, but Maurice gets on the apron and talks trash. 
May takes advantage of the distraction and knocks AJ to the floor. Back to commercial. Back from the break, we get Miz in control. He mocks Daniel Bryan for, uh, with corner kicks and clotheslines. Miz goes, uh, goes to the top, but AJ catches him on the way down. AJ goes for the south clash, but Miz counters. A AJ rolls him up for a two count. Miz mocks another cl uh, clash attempt with a kick to the head. Miz gets in a cheap, uh, kick, a cheap thumb to the eye and goes on to uh, drop AJ with a DDT for a two count. More back and forth, a pen attempt. AJ sends Miz to the apron and nails a pen kick, sending Miz to the floor. AJ with a knee to the face with the apron. AJ grabs Miz and throws him into Cena. Cena runs in as referee calls for the bell. Winner by disqualification, Miz. After the bell, Cena chases AJ out of the ring and stands there. Miz attacks from behind, behind, but Cena scoops him up for the attitude adjustment. AJ springing board then for the phenomenal forearm, but Cena counters and drops him. Cena's music hits, and he hits the corner to pose. Referee checks on AJ as Maurice tends to Miz on the floor. Cena raises the WWE title and hands it to the referee before leaving. So it comes out with a steel, steel cage title match. Nikki Bella is shown heading to the ring as we go to commercial. Back from the break, we get a quick look at the female WWE superstars and a new music video from Sophia Grace. Nikki Bella makes her way to the ring out, uh, to address Natalia. Nikki uh, called Natalia to the ring to finish what they decided last week. And that can be found in this link. Uh, what happens is uh, Natalia appears in the crowd and has something that N Nikki wants to see. She tells Nikki to watch on the big screen. Natalia goes back into the concourse and finds the WWE merchandise stand. She takes down some of Nikki's merchandise and refers to Bret Hart as her ex-uncle. And when she sees one of the shirts, Natalia gets upset because none of her merchandise is out there. She says Nikki and Bret are going to die alone. She picks up a bunch of Nikki's merchandise and starts throwing it in the trash. Nikki comes through, through a door and attacks Natalia. They brawl until security tries to break it up. Nikki slaps, on, slaps one of the guards, and the brawl continues as they're separated. Another still to come segment, Ambrose vs. Wharton, back to commercial. Back from the right, SmackDown's Women's Champion, Alexa Bliss, is an inter interview backstage. She's got a company going into tonight's main event, calls Becky Lynch a human Chucky doll. Hi, remember? Hi, my name's Chucky. Want to play? And now lead us to Kurt Angle, 2017 WF Hall of Fame. Package video. <clears throat> Next up, we got Dean Ambrose versus uh, Randy, Randy Orton. Can be seen in this link. I like it. What have you? We got a ring out comes in the continental champion Dean Ambrose for this non title action. Back to commercial. Back for the break. We can see uh, Randy Orton with Luke Harper and Bray Wyatt. We see a video of the issues between the Wyatt family from last week. Bell finally rings and Ambrose goes up for a roll up. Orton kicks out at one. They go they go at it again and Ambrose nails the crossbody. Then pounds on Orton. Orton goes. Goes to the floor for a breather. Wyatt tells him to get back in. Orton regroups as Ambrose taunts him from the corner. Orton comes back in and they trade holds. More back and forth action as uh, Ambrose takes control of Orton, who turns it around and stop, uh, starts the, the Orton stomp. Orton with a weak, weak, uh, weak pin attempt as Harper and Wyatt look on. Ambrose fights out. But Orton. Knees him in the gut. Orton runs into an elbow, then a boot. Ambrose go, goes to, up top, nails a big elbow for a two count. Ambrose goes for dirty knees, but it's blocked. Orton goes, uh, goes to the floor, but Ambrose followed him out. Orton kicked him. Ambrose came back with a big clothesline to the floor. Ambrose warned Harper and Wyatt. Orton took advantage of, uh, and sent Ambrose into the ring force. Post as Orton slams he Ambrose's head into the announce table. Orton then slams Ambrose on top of the table as we go to commercial. Back from the break. They're going at it. Ambrose floors Orton with a clothesline. Wyatt yells at Orton to get up. Ambrose comes back with four arms. Ambrose with another clothesline and a swinging neck breaker for a two count. They trade shots in the middle of the ring now. Orton with a European uppercut and then a power slam for a two count. Wyatt calls for Orton to, to finish it with an RKO. Orton takes Ambrose up for the superplex, but Ambrose knocks him to the mat. Ambrose jumps off the top but rolls through. The RKO Dirty Deeds are blocked. They counter each other's finishes. Ambrose with a lunatic lariat for a two count. Orton blocks the Bulldog and takes Ambrose to the apron for a second rope JV DDT. But it's blocked. Ambrose sends Orton to the floor. Harper helps him up, but Ambrose nails a big dive on Harper. Orton catches Ambrose coming in and hits the draping DDT. White yells at Orton to finish Ambrose. 
Orton ready for the RKO, but Harper comes in with his eye on Ambrose. Orton and White argue with him, and he walks out of the ring. Ambrose takes advantage of the distraction and rolls Orton up for the win. After the match, Ambrose retreats to, to the ramp as Orton looks on from, from the mat. Wyatt stares Harper down at ringside. Ambrose's music stops as he leaves. Fans chant for the RKO as Harper comes in, in the ring. Wyatt also comes in. Orton and Harper have words, but Wyatt is, is between them. They, they, still, uh, they still start brawling, but Wyatt separates them. Harper comes back over, but Wyatt punches him in the mouth. Harper says Orton did this. Wyatt attacks. Uh, Wyatt backs Orton into the rope. Orton raises his hands, and Wyatt turns back to Harper. Fans are chanting for the RKO. Harper leaves the ring and points at Orton. Orton and Wyatt stare at each other again to end the segment. And we see the steel cage lowering above the ring. Dr. Fentes backstage with Becky Lynch. And her, she's never ran from a fight and knows exactly who she is. But tonight, we'll find out who Alexa Bliss is and won't be a champion. So the come segment, King's Court with Dolph Ziggler. Back to commercial. Can be found at this, right, this link. Back from the rake. Out comes W. Hall of Famer, Jerry King Lawler to, to a hometown pop. Well, they're from Memphis. Uh, they're in Memphis as uh, Lawler welcomes us to the first ever King's Court on Smack on a SmackDown show. Lawler goes on before it, introducing his guest. Out comes Dolph Ziggler. Lawler says he's known Ziggler for a long time, but lately his goodness has faded more than the bleach in his hair. Ziggler just looks angry. Lawler goes on and believes Ziggler has put has been frustrated at not winning matches and is hoping his new attitude will win some matches. Lawler asks if that's what Ziggler is thinking, but he, he still won't respond. Lawler shows us a video package of Ziggler attacking Calissa with a steel chair last week after their match, then taking out Apollo Crews with a chair. Lawler then asks Ziggler what happened. Ziggler raises the mic but doesn't speak. Ziggler walks off at the fans boo. Lawler says he couldn't inter he could have Interviewed an oil painting, and it would have been, been better than this. Lawler wanted Ziggler to come come talk. Ziggler said he wasn't going to come out and play Lawler's game. He knew Lawler would try and make him look bad, try and dirty his name. Ziggler knew Lawler would try and uh, do this because he brought some footage, footage himself. He shows footage from a September 2012 Raw where Ziggler dropped the elbows on Lawler before he had his heart attack. Ziggler says he knows Lawler blamed him for the heart attack, and he should have. Ziggler says it took years for Lawler to be able to face him man-to-man, -man, but if he doesn't stop with the questions, Ziggler will finish when he started in 2012. Fans move him, fans chant uh, for Lawler. Lawler said that that's too bad, because he has one more question. How does it feel to, to know you always will be a loser? No matter how many times you change your attitude, Ziggler turns around and super kicks Lawler in the chest. Lawler leaves the ring as JBL runs in to help Lawler, in to help Lawler up. Lawler yells at Ziggler to get back in the ring if he has any guts. And Ziggler just walks to the back. Then we see Becky and Bless both walking, uh, warming up backstage, and he announces lead, lead us to the for the new Triple X movie with Vin Diesel. Let's return. Which is, all, uh, if you have Fire Stick, you can find that on the Fire Stick. Already out. I uh, tried to watch a, uh, uh, a link on it last night myself. Uh, foreign language. Uh, back from the break, we get uh, Wyatt Family gra graphic flashing. Bray Wyatt appears and, is, uh, uh, and announces that Wyatt, the family will be in the Rumble. He also announces Orton versus Harper for next week. He says one will stand, one will stand, one will fall, but the Wyatt family will be stronger. Still case match for the SmackDown Women's title, main event with this link. We got the ring out come as the Steel Cage is lowered. Becky Lynch is out first to a pop. She's the crowd favorite. SmackDown Women's Champion Alexa Bliss is out next and we go to commercial. Back for the ring, we see uh, we get the ring belt. Bliss goes to escape, but Becky stops her. Becky takes control, but Bliss fights back. Bliss goes to the front of the door, but Becky stops her. Becky runs into an elbow and then a boot. Bliss come, climbs up, but Becky brings her back down. Bliss fights back and Becky uh, and drops Becky. 
Miss catapults Becky, but she jumps on the turnbuckle and climbs the cage. Miss grabs her legs. Miss brings Becky back down, but misses a misses with a clothesline. Becky with an arm drag and a drop kick. Bliss sends Becky into the turnbuckles and takes her corner to corner. Bliss with a kick in the corner now. Becky counters a move and rolls Bliss up for a juke out. Fan chat for Becky. Bliss counters and climbs the cage herself, but Becky comes after her. They end up at the, they're both in the, at the mat as we go to commercial break. Back from the break, Bliss is in control. She works Becky over and covers for a juke out. Becky goes for the door, but Bliss stops her. Becky counters and slams Bliss, Bliss into the corner. Uh, into the turnbuckle. Becky ends up landing a drop kick for a two count. Becky climbs up top of the cage, but Bliss grabs her leg. Becky comes back over to, to, to the top rope, and they trade shots. Becky kicks Bliss on the top rope. Becky nails a huge Bexploder suplex from the top, but Bliss still kicks out at two. This is awesome uh, champ for the crowd. Door is open, but Becky stops Bliss from escaping. The Lucha door appears in the doorway. It stops Becky. Bliss takes advantage, but Be uh, Becky gets her into disarmor. La Luchadora enters the cage and hits Becky. Bliss nails a DDT for the pinfall and win. After the match, Bliss takes her title from the referee as the music hits. Bliss yells at the referee to get out of the ring as we go to replays. Music stops and they double team Becky. Becky fights back and drops them both. Becky grabs the mask and reveals Mickey James. Becky is shocked. Mickey smiles and laughs. Uh, Bliss uh, comes from behind and they, and they both attack, attack Becky again. Music hits as Bliss stands tall with Mickey. And we go to replay. Smackdown goes off the air with Bliss and Mickey together. And now team. Then welcome us to the, to the card uh, for 205. We get singles action. Drew Gulak versus Cedric Alexander, founder of this thing. Alicia uh, Fox uh, follows Cedric to the, uh, to the ring. Cedric sends her on her way. And she's not happy about that. She calls Alexander a rookie in her book. In her book and her herself hot chocolate. Dar comes down for a foxy assist. But Alexander sends him running. Cedric uh, takes out all parties involved. And goes flying all, all over Gulak, uh, Gulak and Dar. Gulak attacks from behind with chop and a uh, chop block, and Alexander is down. He shakes it off and uh, wants to start the match. Good build for for a baby face here. Alexander wants a match start uh, started at the bell ring, and the bell is ring. He immediately attacks, but quickly reversed by Gulak. Alexander hits a drop kick, but uh, drops in pain, selling the leg. Gulak catches Alexander on the apron and hits a dragon screw leg whip between the ropes. Gulak continues to work over the leg as Alexander rids in pain. Alexander creates separation and sends Gulak to the outside. Both men back in. Alexander lock, lands a few strikes, but not much behind him. Alexander is doing a great sell job here, but going for a near, nearly every move in his arsenal that involves a leg. Another shot block from Gulak. Belly to back suplex in a, into a bridge cover. One, two, three. Gulak picks up the win. After the match, Dar and Fox. In in the back, watching it on the monitor, Dara says that's what he's done for her. She apparently disagrees and gives Dara a love a love tap. I guess another slap. Video Pack is looking at the Neville Swan feud ahead of their championship match at the Royal Rumble. These things never disappoint. Mustafa Ali versus Tony Nese. Let's see this thing. Before the match, Dasha interviews Nice. He talks about being automatically prepared for the uh, for the match based on him. Being the premier athlete, Ali uh, posted a great video earlier in the day with an inspirational promo. A closely contested handshake gets us started. Ali's quickness ga gains him the edge early on, and then into some technical pa uh, power uh, prowess before getting some high flying. You want it? These guys got it. Ali showing a bit of personality as well before he hits a swift kick. Ali getting big confident, a bit confident, and taking. Too much time setting up an aerial maneuver. Knees hits a kick, uh, kick to the gut that places Ali right on, on his shoulders for a gut buster. Knees stays on, on him uh, as he applies the body scissors to cut him off. Cut off the air. Ali was able to break out, but is tripped up by Knees. Knees goes for the springboard moonsault, but comes up empty. Ali flipped back in, 
in the ring and hits a flurry of baseball uh, style chops. Knee swings and misses in a, on a corner attack and is met with a back side in Segiri. Rolls through neck breaker. One of my favorite moves in Ali's arsenal. It's only good for a two count tornado DDT and Ali and Nice out after a long two count. Ali's selling a tree of uh, the ribs as he's picked up and pinned in the corner. Ali tried to escape, but Nice grabs the tights and pulled Ali into a German suplex into the ropes. And that set up, set up, set up the ro running Nice for the win. I did not see any of it. I went to a rescue a good friend of mine who had to move. And by the time we got back, everything was over. Uh, injury update on to Jerry. He has a knee injury and could be out for a few months. Nothing more than that from the, from the uh, show. Jack Gallagher versus Harry DeVere in an eye forfeit match. Let me find it this link. Uh, but uh, before the match, I had a video package looking at Akira Tozawa. Paulo Cruz put him over as our English commentary for the video. Tozawa debuts soon. That's all I said. Quick tie-up that leads us to a short uppercut from the gentleman. The trade holds and the reversals early on. Ankle pick from uh, Gallagher setting up a, a driving surfboard. A official is uh, carrying a mic and asks DeVere if he forwards to an immediate no. Gallagher grabs a uh, his trusty companion, William, the umbrella. DeVere attacks, takes William, breaks it in half. DeVere with a side slam onto the apron. Gallagher says no once again. And DeVere goes straight to a submission for, uh, for multiple no's. DeVere grabs the mic, rips the, rips the crowd, and tells Gallagher to give up. After an emphatic no, he sends the gentleman into, a bar into the barricade. DeVere works the face area as he... Sets the hooks into the nostrils and eyes of, of Gallagher as he then elbows across the side of the head in hopes of that Gallagher doesn't do yoga. DeVere st stretches him across the ring post and Gallagher refuses to forfeit. DeVere grabs, a, uh, grabs his garb, blinds Gallagher for a forearm, and proceeds to tie Gallagher's arm as a leash into several short arm clotheslines. Gallagher essentially handcuffed by the garb but uses his educated head and feet to send DeVere to the outside. He unties himself and goes searching for, for toys under the ring. It's William number two, another. Well, Francesca's long lost brother. We're all the way down to the, down the entrance ramp and they bounce off the LED board. DeVere looked for a power bomb, but Gallagher reverses and catapults DeVere into the board. William, uh, becoming a factor, repeated shots to the back of DeVere. Gallagher politely asks the announce team to move, and he sends DeVere across the announce table. You know it's getting serious when Gallagher's hair is out of place. Another way, way, another William shows himself from the timekeeper's area. Jack politely asks DeVere to forfeit. He looks to be an, to be announcing it before hitting a shot to the throat of Gallagher. He applies a, a deep cobra clutch, but Gallagher able to grab William the third and break it up. He transitions into an, into an umbrella assisted cross face chicken wing. The very struggled momentarily before saying, I forfeit. Got her win, win drive, I forfeit match. For your fun, uh, main event for all that. I do not get any, uh, results for the, any dark matches after that or be, uh, in between or whatever. So that ends my video for this week and uh, for your spike down main event. And 205 live. Thanks again. Peace out. See you on one If you don't know, just call me, brothers and sisters.